I can't believe Inosuke just straight up told my boy Tengen that his three wives are probably dead when he's like, hey, I sent them in to infiltrate because they're like these very trained ninjas who are apparently super hot as well. And Inosuke, with his lack of chill, is just like, yeah, she's probably dead. All three of them. I was <laughs> like, this show's comedy. This episode in general was hilarious. I mean, literally everyone but Tanjiro got the living shit beat out of them for some dumbass remark they said. And just the idea that in last week's comment section, I mean, I was talking with someone about how, like, you know, it actually makes a lot of sense that if they were to get dressed up, I mean, Inosuke himself has been presented as having, like, this kind of female figure that people would probably worship. And to see all three of them, I mean, really, besides Inosuke, they don't dress up that well as females, I gotta be honest with ya, <laughs> said to himself. I mean, the passion in his playing of being sold for free, basically, it says it all, but I mean, in terms of Tanjiro, he's kinda passable, but Inosuke doesn't even make up at all, just completely beautiful in the eyes of the women. Just, you can't speak because of his voice. I have a feeling, just based on how the internet is, Tengen's gonna get some pushback because he has not one but three different wives, and I feel like the internet's gonna act like Zensu in this episode, just upset that this hot stud of a man has three hot wives, and the fact that they're all super powerful too. I feel like, just given the internet and how they handle poly anything in any sort of media, they're just always up in arms, so I imagine it'll be quite funny to see just who gets triggered by that. Because I did hear that there was some elements about this arc that would probably rub the internet, especially Twitter, the wrong way, and I imagine this has to be it. I thought it was just going to be something to do with the fact that we're going to be in, like, a prostitution district, and, I mean, the red light district, right? But to see the idea of what went down, I mean, the fact that he sent three people who are beautiful would very well be able to infiltrate to figure out what's going on to locate demons. I mean, this is literally the prime location for demons. In the day, it's completely dead. At night, it's popping off. Where else would a demon hide? And I mean, based on the opening, we get a taste on who is behind it. And it seems like most likely the most powerful person in this district is probably behind the kidnapping that we saw at the end of this episode. I'm not sure if all three of them have been kidnapped or just the one, but the fact of the matter is he no longer was getting his letters. And the fact that we see one of his wives just chained up with like these, almost it kind of remind me of the things you wrap kimonos with. I'm not, I'm forgetting the name of it. Someone will probably tell me in the comments, but it almost felt like all those strands that were kind of holding her up. It reminded me of like the almost like belt or the sash, whatever it's called that wraps around kimonos. And the fact of the matter is she didn't look all that good. She was bleeding around her face. So... It says to me that it is definitely a matter of time and we got to figure out how to save them as soon as possible. Given the cliffhanger, it seems like Inosuke probably will be a saving grace there. I don't think he's going to bust in and save her right then and there. But if she was about to get a death blow because she wasn't revealing any sort of answers, Inosuke popping in, knocking on the door probably will save her ass. Though it's interesting because, I mean, this isn't like starting off in the most explosive of ways in terms of like we're just jumping into action and things like that. But you can definitely tell from the opening, and you can definitely tell by the ability of what's been teased. There's going to be some crazy action, but Demon Slayer's always had comedy right on its sleeve. It's always been silly, it's always been goofy, and to have Zensu of all characters, you know, really just come out of his shell this episode, just so up in arms. Like, he can't even get Nezuko, and you know, this man apparently has three hot wives. We have this man talking about how he wants to be Lord of the Mountains. Tanjiro, he's just Tanjiro. And this man thinks he's the god of the festivals. And when Inosuke was like, hello, god of the festivals, I, you know, I'm the ruler of the mountains. And the fact of the matter is the only thing that really seemingly triggers him to, like, a lot. Disobedience, not following the rules, and trying to put yourself on the same pedestal as me. Because you guys are worms and you're going to obey my every command. This dude is hot and full of energy. Like, this man's like just a steam whistle. Just the steam's coming out of his ears and he is either super charismatic or he's just an absolute dick, but honestly, I love it. He's so different than everyone we've experienced from super, like, just very wholesome characters like Rengoku to kind of quiet badasses to now the badass of just love, I guess. I don't even know. He's just awesome. I'm loving his character, and I have a feeling based on his weaponry, I think his action scenes are going to be badass. I mean, something you got to really commend Demon Slayer for is it never reuses the same types of fighting styles. Even if someone uses the same breathing techniques, it feels like the way they harness their weapons and utilize them, it doesn't really feel like it's, oh, just because they're all Hashras, they all kind of have the same type of training. No, they're very different, and there's a reason why some are ranked above the other. 
And I'm very curious to see what I'll feel coming out of this season when I see what Tengen's capable of. How will I rank him in terms of who we've seen fight? Because I'm not saying like Rengoku was the strongest character in the Demon Slayer universe. I was basically saying when I was covering uh, the Mugen Train arc that he's the most powerful we've seen fight on our protagonist side. So I'm very curious to see what Tang is going to be capable of and how the other three will incorporate themselves into the fights because right now we're kind of on the stealth mission, but eventually that stealth is going to wear off and it's going to be, hell's going to be breaking loose. But you can't get innocent people up in the casualty, so it kind of feels to me, based on the fact that we're already kind of setting up, I mean, prostitution and everything like that, they get sold into slavery, basically. If you rise up the rankings enough, you can buy your freedom. It's already basically using human shields as protection, so they have to be careful. And that's an interesting concept for demons, basically already profiting off humans for money. But if the Demon Slayers came up and tried to stop them, you can literally use so many different innocent people as shields. So it almost feels like you have one shot and one shot only at getting the jump on this demon and fighting and finishing it off. Because if not, I mean, at that point, the humans are all but shields and you're not going to cut through them to get to her. The whole point is to help these people, right? So it's a pretty interesting setting. I mean, visually, it looks stunning with the red lights and everything like that. The, the scenery looks beautiful despite it being kind of warped and so much corruption. I mean, you can see the younger girls and like already being sold into that lifestyle and basically being groomed for this horrible, horrible situation. So it's beautiful on a visual level, but when you go in deep down inside and see what's truly going on under there, many of those people had no say. It's different if they willingly wanted to be a part of that lifestyle. It's another being sold into it. So, I mean, I'm hoping they can crush the head demon in charge here, who, I mean, is probably going to be a badass, but a frightening one all at the same time. I mean, the cool thing about Demon Slayer that I've seen over the first season and these two arcs so far is the fact of the matter is they don't reuse the same settings and they don't reuse the same ideas. I mean, in Season 1, one of my favorite aspects was the forest location in terms of Tanjiro and how they dealt with that, the Mugen train arc being a lot more claustrophobic and basically having to protect everyone, the Red Light District, kind of the same thing, but it's a very interesting setting. In terms of just pure settings alone, I think this one has the most potential of what we've seen so far, and I think there's only one type of personality that would probably work as well as it does. I mean, you can't have Rengoku in a situation like this. Well, you could. It'd be funny. But I think Tengen is definitely the person for the job at tackling this. And I mean, I'm excited. I I really am. From what we've seen of glimpses of his three wives, they seem badass and powerful. It's just unfortunately, even the strongest can get a jump on them. I mean, just look at Rengoku, right? I mean, he was a badass. And just because he died fighting a demon doesn't mean he was weak. So I don't look at his wives being kidnapped and things like that as oh, they're weak, they can't do anything. I mean, it's crystal clear they're badass ninjas, but everyone has bad days, and it seems like they're kind of up in arms in their own bad days right now. But let me know your thoughts and feelings on this episode. It was hilarious. What was your favorite joke? And what do you think is going to happen with Inosuke approaching that door? What do you think is going to go down there? Leave a like if you enjoyed, though, and subscribe if you're new around here. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.